Hi everybody! Today I'll talk about some tips to work with surface noise. If you've ever played with ZBrush materials, you know that with them you can use noise to give to your objects the look of a great variety of surfaces. And, of course, if you've ever used ZBrush, you know that guys at Pixelogic are indeed smart people. So, mixing these two concepts, becomes obvious why in the new 3.5 version you can now apply noise in a similar way you made to the materials but at the surface level with the great possibility to apply it as depth information on your mesh. If we look at our tool menu we see that we have this new surface table. If I expand it and click on the noise button I will apply surface noise onto my model. I want to point out that at this stage, noise resolution is not dependent on the resolution of your model, as we can realize moving towards the lower subdivision levels of my tool. This can be considered, in fact, some sort of preview. Only when I will bake the noise into the surface pressing the Apply to Mesh button, the resolution of the mesh will obviously determine the resolution and so the quality of the noise. Inside the Surface tab, we have a bunch of options to customize our noise. Here we have the scale and the intensity, two basic parameters that control, respectively, the size of the noise function and how much the surface has to be displaced by the noise. Clicking on the curve, I will expand it. And adjusting it, I can get a very fine control over the look of my surface noise. As the Z Classroom portal has already a series of videos talking about surface noise in great detail, explain all the options to apply it even to color and masks, I will try to go in deeper detail on the meaning of the curve and how to control the look of the noise. Even if I am not super expert of much issues related with the generation of noise, and of course I don't know the ZBrush noise algorithm, I will try to be smart, even to honor the fresh promotion to ZBrush Certified Instructor, and use the program's features to understand more about this. Recalling some math concepts from the time I was a student, I can see that the curve is the graphic representation of a function that I can use to tell ZBrush how much perturbation it has to apply based on an input value defined by the noise algorithm. I can guess that the default noise algorithm assigns some default input noise value to the surface in a range from a minimum to a maximum value. And for simplicity we will consider this range going from 0 to 1. First of all I have to visualize the default noise value. I have found a cool trick to color code it in grayscale onto my model. First of all, I can notice that as the curve is a straight line, this means that at this stage the final noise is equal to the default input value. In fact, where the input is 0, the output is 0, and so on, going to the 1 value. So now, what I can do is colorize my model with pure black. Then give the noise a color blend of 1 towards a white color. Last, apply a very small noise strength. This because if the strength is 0, the program doesn't apply the color blending, because considers the noise as switched off. And this is how we have to do. We now see the noise spatial function in its original form. So now where we have black, we have the zero value of noise, where we have one, we have the one value of the noise. So now I will stamp a copy of my mesh in this form to have a visual reference of my original noise. This because the color blend will change once I will start to modify my curve. Now I can even uh, turn off uh, the color blend Turn off the colorize and bring my model 
black to white uh, maybe assign some uh, matcap gray that I find a uh, great material to see and uh, start to apply back some noise it's important uh, at this stage not to change the sides or else uh, the noise on the model will not be comparable to my reference stamp I can see that there is a close correlation between noise and color patterns. In fact, where my color is black, I have the more recessed areas of noise. Whereas, corresponding to the white spots, I will find the raised zones. So, let's say that now I want to have all the mid-gray areas onto my color coded noise to be at the same height what I can do is simply create a point on my curve transform it to a linear point simply by going outside my graphic and going back without releasing my mouse create another point put it on the same Y height and that's it this because in the curve graph the hex values represent the default noise values as color coded in the left model while the Y values represent the final output I set relative to this default noise range so now I can use this information to build up uh, all kinds of different effects for example turning the white spots uh, into recessed areas as the black ones or uh, giving uh, no noise uh, to all the model except uh, for a very narrow range of my default noise creating this sort of uh, cracky mud look for my model one last thing to remember if you plan to apply the noise to your mesh and especially if you want to achieve uh, this uh, kind of looks uh, with uh, a big part of your model uh, not subjected to noise uh, and uh, small areas recessed or raised remember always that uh, when applying to the mesh uh, the program will consider the Y value of 0.5 as not being deformed the Y values from 0 to 0.5 will be recessed while the upper part of the graphic will be raised this behavior can be inverted inverting the strength of the noise now I will try to apply the noise to mesh with all these points set to 0.5 and I obtain the desired result and uh, as a proof uh, of this uh, being very important I will try to set uh, a plateau of points at a Y value different than 0.5 when I apply the noise in preview mode I can see that everything seems fine but when I apply to mesh I can get this sort of uh, in my opinion funky look with models that uh, all of a sudden seem uh, to be all inflated or uh, shrinked by a super diet so thanks for watching I hope uh, I was uh, enough smart sorry for my poor English and uh, see you next time